Hey everybody, I'm excited to introduce you to my new full restoration series of a all original paint 1970 383 four speed CUDA. The original color is FK5, which is deep burnt orange. It's an original no console rally dash and black standard interior car. As you can see, this car is an amazingly rust free as shown in these shots. Apparently the car had some damage to the right rear quarter panel, which is why the quarter panel will be replaced. But as the camera scans around, you can see how solid the car is, which is amazing since it spent most of its life in the Northeast and in the Midwest. The story of how I got this car is pretty crazy. I basically brought, bought a grab bag car that was stored inside a 24 foot trailer, sight unseen in person. The car was completely apart and stored in this trailer for years. As you can see, I had no idea of exactly what I was getting until the trailer was delivered to me. Once I emptied it out, what I found was a fully documented, all numbers matching, well-preserved 1970 CUDA with its original fender tag, two broadcast sheets, and a copy of every title all the way back to the original owner. Here's a shot of all the, the copies of titles and the broadcast sheet and the original warranty paperwork, which is in all in beautiful condition, as you can see from these shots. including the original ignition key shown there. These next shots will be focusing on the different driveline components and the numbers. The engine looks to be all original and in my opinion doesn't look like it's ever been apart. The car has 83,000 miles on it which is consistent to the way this engine looks. As I focus in on these numbers, they are consistent with the build date of the car, which is 219 or February 19th. As I focus in on the partial VIN on the block, you can see it's also consistent with the matching numbers to the fender tag, the VIN tag, and the broadcast sheets. The original four-speed tranny and the rear end are all from the original car and all the numbers are matching to the car as I'll show as I focus in on the VIN number on the transmission. This is the intake that I got with the car, and I am assuming that it's the original intake to the car. One of the previous owners had started restoration on the car, and he probably cleaned it up and painted it at some point. 
Here's some more shots of some of the other various items that are original to the car, including these wheels. These are the original steel wheels that came with the car. That is an, that is an NOS complete grill assembly to the car. It's NOS original grill assembly. This is the original rally dash to the car. This is the original steering column. and the original pistol grip shifter. These numbers on the core support and the cowl areas also are matching to the VIN and the broadcast sheet and the VIN tag. There's a very cool Easter egg I found under the driver's door sill plate. The second owner who bought the car from the original owner in December of 1972 and owned it for 26 years etched his name and year 1973 in the paint. I have kept that intact and that will not be removed. Notice the die lot stamp on the rocker panel. This car has all the die lot stamps all the way around. These next shots are of various locations throughout the car showing all the original paint and sheet metal. Also, you will notice a lot of the original undercoating is on the car that was both applied at the factory and at the dealership when the car was new. I'm going to leave all of that intact and then repaint the areas that, that, were, that are showing orange still and then paint the undercoating black again so it brings it back to looking like new again. Again, you can see how rust-free this car is, which is really remarkable. It's obvious this car was never driven in the snow and always retained its original paint. All this interior factory paint will be preserved. I've instructed the body shop to not paint any of this over again. I want to leave it all as original paint. Here's another example of the existing undercoating that will be preserved. It'll be cleaned up and then repainted to look like new again. Here's another example of an original die lot stamp on the front of the core support. This section of the video is going to be focusing on the entire process of all the metalwork and bodywork, starting with the metalwork on the quarter panel and the fenders. This next section of the video, I'm going to let the camera kind of speak for itself as all the bodywork and metalwork is done on the car to bring it to the point where it's almost ready for paint. 
so I'll chime in when it's necessary. This shot is of Lamb, the painter, using a special camera to match the original paint color, which was in pristine, unfaded condition at this location. Then he enters it into the computer, and the formula is calculated into a menu that shows what colors and how much to mix to achieve the original correct color. Pretty amazing technology.
He then mixes the paint and shoots a test panel. So he shoots the test panel with the primer first, blows that dry, then he shoots the color. Now, FK5 is a translucent color, so you can see that it goes on very transparent, and he adds the, the coats to achieve the actual color shade. And he lets that dry a little bit, and then he applies the clear coat to it to achieve the correct color. And as you can see, it's a perfect match. So we decided the method we are using is to jam the whole car, then assemble and line up all the panels perfectly, then paint the car completely assembled. So as you can see, the panels, parts, and pieces are shot as well as the engine compartment of the car. Then after the color was applied, we shot the original undercoating to bring it back. We shot it black to bring it back to look like new again, as shown here. And turned out perfect. So at that point, we moved the car into the booth and painted the areas of the undercarriage that showed original orange paint. Then we painted the original undercoating black to bring it back to looking like new again. These shots are, were taken before the undercoating was shot black. But now the undercarriage of the car looks exactly the way it did when the car was brand new. That trunk pan had been repaired before I bought the car. So luckily all of that crude repair work will be done will be covered up by the gas tank. So at this point, I'm going to let the camera tell the story again while the car is reassembled and the final bodywork is done in preparation for the paint.
So at this point, the car has all of the bodywork, metalwork, uh, has all been completed, and the car is ready to be blocked one more time. And this blocking brings the car to where it's as smooth as glass. They rub the entire car with very fine, different courses of sandpaper until it's very, very smooth like glass. So here it is after that procedure has been done and you can see the car is almost shiny. It's been rubbed so much. And now to the, it's just smooth as glass to the touch. So at this point, the car is ready to be moved into the paint booth. And the first thing that will happen is that they'll apply the sealer coat to the car. So the booth is prepped and cleaned, then the car is moved in. I'm allowing the natural sounds to remain so that you can experience what a paint booth sounds like when all of the fans are running throughout the paint booth. At this point, Lamb is preparing the surface to apply the sealer. So here he is applying the sealer and I'm outside the, the, the actual booth looking through the glass door because you don't want to have anyone in there with street clothes on. The, the, uh, the paint booth will suck the dirt right off your clothes and onto the car.
you have to wear a uncontaminated paint suit before you go in there if you want to be in there while he's painting. So the sealer is applied to cover up all of the scratch marks from the sanding and so on and it just gives it a nice smooth finish as you can see here now that the sealer has dried. So he will rub down the car one more time with 600 grit paper to you know roughen up the surface and then he'll start applying the color. So here are the very first shots of the color being applied. At this point coming up, I did put on a paint suit and a mask and went into the booth while he was painting the color on, which I'm glad I did because I got some great shots of him working. Again, I'm leaving the natural sounds of the paint booth in here, which in reality are much louder than this. So then the car is, uh, the final two coats are done the next day. The, the car is rubbed with 600 grit paper and then two coats of clear applied. So here is the car completely finished with all of its clear on it. And now the next video that I will post will be of us cutting and polishing the car which means that it has to be wet sanded down and then polished to get rid of all the imperfections and smooth out the clear. At that point, the car will be like glass. So as you can see, the paint job just turned out absolutely beautiful and the bodywork on the car is absolutely perfect. And I wanna thank Simon and Nate at Auto Center Marin in San Rafael, California for all of their great work and help at their body shop, which again is right next door to my shop. So I uh, thank them very much for a great job. And stay tuned for part two of this where we cut and polish the car and install the hockey stick stripe. So thank you so much for watching and please uh, subscribe and hit the bell for future notifications. And 
you can watch other videos that I have of my restorations. So there again, thank you again for watching.